video, we're going to focus on E54D as in dog. And the reason why they're kind of connected is this one is going to explain to you exactly what happens uh, to biospheres, animals, plants, and even humans uh, because of climate changes uh, due to eruptions of volcanoes, uh, having difference in sunlight, uh, as well as uh, possible impacts, uh, you know, impacting of, let's say, asteroids, uh, parts of asteroids turning into meteorites and actually impacting the Earth. So uh, that's the focus is E54D for this one. So let's go ahead and get started. Difference in sunlight, uh, as well as uh, possible impacts, uh, you know, impacting of, let's say, asteroids, uh, parts of asteroids turning into meteorites and actually impacting the Earth. So uh, that's the focus is E54D for this one. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, again, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on the human activities and what they're actually doing to our climate and how they're affecting the biosphere. Uh, so what's truly happening is as we see a change in global warming and how that, you know, how the temperature rise even of one degree to and maybe even three degrees um, and how specifically that is actually changing and affecting uh, what's actually transpiring um, you can see right here in this picture and actually I'll come back to this in a moment let's go back here um, what you see is as temperatures are going up uh, the levels of the sea are starting to rise and the reason for that is you have the melting of ice um, as I mentioned in an earlier video, we were going to talk about, you know, if you have an ice cube in a cup uh, and you let it melt versus if you take the ice cube out of the cup and raise it right to the top of it. And so you put the ice cube right up here and you let it drip, drip, drip into that glass. Which one causes the actual level of the water to increase? So is it the ice cube that's in the water already? or is it the ice cube that's above the water? Which one causes the actual water in that can or in that glass to rise? The answer is, it's the ice cube that is above it. If you put the ice cube into the water, the water level is gonna rise. It's called volume displacement. So the water level already rises and when it melts, the water level is gonna stay the same. So if you have an iceberg already in the ocean and it melts, that doesn't cause the sea level to change at all. And then that, some people are, are, there's a misconception about that. But the bigger issue with regards to melting is just this. It is the melting of ice that is on land and then running off and going into the actual oceans, and the lakes, and so on and so forth. Okay. Now, as you can see, where we used to be, when we were in the ice age, looking at the screen, you can see right up here where ice used to cover and again in an earlier video we talked about uh, when there was a five to nine degree temperature difference in the northeast there were three thousand feet of ice covering the northeast portion of the United States right there so what you see currently right now and I'll point this out uh, using some colors here is using this very bottom right now the present landmass is what you see highlighted in this kind of whitish greenish look as you look at all the continents. Okay, that's where we are right now. The Ice Age landmass is what is outlined in red, and that's how big this actually used to be uh, prior, you know, prior to us where we are right now during the last Ice Age. So this is not just one thing that's affected. We're also looking at a second, wildlife. You're talking about plants, animals, and the habitats. Uh, again, this has been something we've talked about over and over again. You've read about, you've watched videos about, you've you've done experiments with. It's the fact that they're being affected because, you know, if, uh, if the temperature continues to rise, plants can't grow in some particular areas. We talked about warm water fish. Although the water may be getting warmer and they're expanding, there are other fish in there that do not like the water getting warm, so they have to move. So if they don't, they die. And that affects, again, the economy, you know, fishermen. That affects the ecosystem in, in regards to the food web. Um, so it's it's a challenge. Now, I show you this picture, and some people might go, oh, I feel so bad for them. And rightfully so. But there are other people that look at this and say, who cares about the polar bears? Why do they keep talking about the polar bears? 
Well, the reason why they get used is because some people have this connection with them. Not that you want to have one, you know, at your house, but the fact is you've been to a zoo, you've seen them, so at least you have some sort of connection to them. Um, but we're watching this happen. We're watching as temperatures change where these habitats in which these animals used to walk across and sometimes even swim to get to the next one uh, with regards to sea ice, uh, there's no more sea ice or not enough for them to do that. And a lot of times what they do is when they jump off the ice and go swimming thinking they're going to come across another one, it's not there and they drown. Agriculture. Agriculture is an interesting one because while well, we live in Hamilton, and well, the most of us do at least, but it's a big part of the livelihood of many of your families or maybe friends of your families or, you know, maybe even just your neighbors. But as there is an increase in temperature, what that's doing is it's, it may be good for some areas, increasing the amount of precipitation because it's increasing evaporation. But in other areas, it's introducing droughts and significant droughts. Um, so even though it may be good for some areas, there are other parts of the world that are being affected in a negative way. So, you know, lengthening the growing season is a great thing. But because it's lengthening the growing season for one climate, that means somewhere else the climate is actually being stressed and that can create other issues and problems. Human health. This is a big one and this is going to become more of a problem uh, over the course of the next, you know, say 10, 15, 20, 25 years um, as if it isn't already started uh, or hasn't started. Uh, temperatures increasing will you know, do a couple things. Number one, heat deaths will rise if temperatures continue to rise. You know, you have elderly folks, uh, grandparents that sometimes are living by themselves, have nobody around, and, you know, sometimes just don't know how to operate uh, in, you know, get an AC running or maybe don't even have AC or have a fan running and drinking enough water and all those different things. But that's only one part. There is also the cold part. So if you have an increase in temperatures potentially in one climate, you could actually have a decrease in temperatures in another. And that's why this whole idea of global warming, this whole word, this phrase that got coined is kind of incorrect because global climate change would have been a much better word or phrase to use because it's a change of the climate. It's not that the whole globe is warming, which there's proof that it is but it's a change in climates, both warm and cold, and that can also lead to deaths as well. The big one though is diseases. Uh, malaria as an example that I'm gonna talk about. What happens is when you look at the possible extent by 2050, based upon what's happening to current climates, here's what's gonna happen. Malaria, as we see it, we're looking at a larger number of people uh, dealing with malaria. The current distribution of malaria, you notice, is where you find all the yellow. And most of that is found right along where you find the equator, or close to the equator right here. But as the temperatures change and as we get warmer water in our oceans, when the temperatures go up in our oceans, what that's going to do is it's going to allow malaria to then start to spread into these warmer areas now and you're going to start to see that spread start to pop up in places that they haven't dealt with nor seen malaria. Uh, so it's an interesting issue. It's one example. There are others, but I just thought I would bring one example to light, and that being malaria. So anyway, that, uh, that concludes the...